You are now listening to the Yeshiva League Pass Tip Off. Ari, we did it. We did it. We filled up your hands. Ten. It's Ten. The Congratulations. We could do. Congratulations. That's right. That's right. No. Thank all you. We made it to number 10. I, I mean, I got to be honest. I, I didn't think we were going to get past uh, like like two. Like binary? What was that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't know if we were even going to get to an episode one. But uh, we are here. It's number 10. And we're not just here to pat ourselves on the back. We have a great, great guest tonight with uh, big announcements, if you haven't heard yet, in the uh, world of uh, Yeshiva basketball. But before we get to that, we have to. Uh, thank all of our guests, the, the uh, eight guests that came on. Our guest tonight, uh, Ethan, will be number nine for episode 10. Not to confuse anybody. Ari's probably very confused right now. He's I am. All these numbers in his yeah, head. And, um, but we also have to thank the, the people that made this possible. And uh, Ari, those are our sponsors. Yes. They are this our sponsors. It's and, a special uh, episode. I, I, I can't even speak. It's, it's a I know. special he's so, episode. He's, he's so clamped. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so we're going to run down all of our sponsors that got us here, uh, starting with Gotta Get a Bagel. Gotta they Get are, a Bagel. Uh, if you, if you need a bagel, a salad, a uh, a, a Danish, um, whatever you need. Uh, they're in the five towns, and they cater. They cater parties. They do yep. They do what they do. So you, you got to gotta take Check a look over out. there. Adam B. Kaufman, one of two attorneys that will appear in this uh, in this role tonight. But Adam was our first attorney. Uh, wills, estates. Ari, I'm still in your will, right? Episode yes, 10? Yes, you're still in my will. You get half of the show. Oh, and uh, no. without me, I don't know if it is a show, but you'll get half of it. Well, we're going to find out in other parts of life. All right. And uh, Central Perk Cafe. Eight there today. Eight there today. Central Perk. Go check them out. You know, they're not just a sponsor. It's Ari's lifeblood. He doesn't eat much, but when he does, he, uh, he goes go to, to Central, Central Perk. Perk. Inside That's dining, right. outside dining. It's and uh, not to think that we favor uh, food establishments, but the uh, holiest of holy, the holy schnitzel. You hear Bella's excited in the background. Bella, Bella's excited for holy schnitzel. You know, she's she's uh, always looking for a nice uh, holy meal, and holy schnitzel does the deal. Yeah, they uh, they took care of us. If you watch back our first couple episodes, uh, I couldn't stop eating the whole time because, uh, well, right. it was just fantastic. Uh, then we have more tons. I was uh, there camp, today as well. Camp is coming. Uh, is that why you were there, Ari? Yeah, I was there. I was getting ready for camp, getting ready for, uh, you know, the uniforms that they have, trying to fit into a children's small didn't work, but uh, check them so out. They the, have all so the So you got the you extra need. small? Exactly. Correct. Excellent. Morton's on Central Avenue. And, and uh, one of our newest sponsors, Trio, that's a T-R-I-O dot Academy. Uh, they're the only sponsor. Well, actually, Morton's, if you mention our show, you get 10% off. Is that correct? Yes, you get 10 Correct. 10% off at Morton's. Mentioned and the and Trio, off. if you mention Trio dot Academy, you get $250 off of uh, nice. tuition, which starts as low as 7500 bucks. Get your college degree in like a year and a half. It's, it's pretty right. wild. Check them out. I'm, I'm not going to talk about uh, if you want to hear more about it, watch the last episode or go to trio.academy and uh, check, check out. them out. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, Gary Mandel, he is the other attorney. He handles uh, immigration and personal injury. I didn't look this up before. I just remember this. This is good stuff. And then uh, really our two most important sponsors. I mean, without whom none of this would, would be possible. Uh, first, the Lion's Den. Oh. Lions Den. Yeah. Just I just came from the Lions Den, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just just yeah. was there, and it's uh it's it's rock and rolling. Get your kids involved. Check it out at the Eula East Rockaway Jewish Center. The Lions Den is the place to be. And then let's least, not least, last but certainly not least, <laughs> is Ballers Basketball Academy. If you're looking to uh, improve your game, like Ethan Lasco, and uh, maybe Ethan Lasco will even be there as a guest instructor. Ooh, is perhaps. that official? Is that official? No, I haven't even told him yet. I've asked him. I haven't even met him yet. So <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> All right. And there it is. Those are the nine sponsors that have. We made... thank them. We, we really do thank them. They've been yes, made here since the beginning. Ten episodes filled up Ari's fingers possible. Super, super thank you. And and at this point, well, you and I are uh, are going to stop talking. Well, we're not. We're going to continue no, talking. Please. But uh, we're going to continue talking to our guest. He is fresh off uh, a two-school college uh, Division One tour. 
He started at the Indiana University. No, it's actually the University the, of Indiana. I, well, I was going to say the University of Indiana. Is that yeah, what it no, is? It's University of Indiana. I thought it was IU. Yeah. Oh, well, whatever. It's a it's university, correct. and it's in Indiana, and correct. you can figure out the rest. And uh, we'll ask him. And uh, then he transferred Manhattan. to Manhattan College. Manhattan right here. College. Uh, you guessed it. In Manhattan. I, I and, think uh, I'm not sure. By the way, is it? It may be in the Bronx. Uh, in, the, in the New York proper area. Right. Yes. One yes, of those. Yes. Right. One of those. As if we don't get confused easily enough. That just you know, when your college is named something and it's not there, it's a little confusing. But and although he's done with college and on to graduate school, maybe basketball is not done. Let's bring him in right now. Ethan Lasko, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. So first we have to get this out of the way because Ari and I are graphically, uh, uh, geographically challenged. Uh, where is it that you, uh, where is Manhattan College? We, we couldn't figure it out. So it's a little bit of a misconception because the name is Manhattan College. Um, so I think, I think like technically we are in Manhattan, but we're really in Riverdale slash the Bronx. Ah, mm. I was right. I'm not usually right, but when I when I said yeah, it, so, Manhattan College. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's like if you look one way, it's Riverdale. If you look the other, it's the Bronx. Okay. So you could uh, pick and choose how you want to spend your day. Honestly. <laughs> okay, so so we're we're both technically right. So then it works. Yeah. It works all over. That's good. Well, first of all, Ethan, thank you for coming on the show. We know that uh, you're a busy man. You have a lot going on and. You know, one of the first things we'll get to the big announcement that you that you came out with. I think it was last week about that you're going to be continuing your your uh, your basketball career at Yeshiva University. Oh, but... Ari, you gave it away. Now everyone's going to turn it off. <laughs> oh, we we'll just blow the whole show in the first. Don't worry. It's it's all right. So this, thank you for coming, Ethan. We'll see you next uh, next year <laughs> after you exactly. score a lot of points or why you. No, so obviously that that's big news. But tell tell us a little bit uh, about your background. I know that you you're from South Florida. You started at. Uh, uh, what's a catch of Shiva. And then you, you kind of, you know, outplayed the competition there and went somewhere else. So tell us about your background playing ball when you really started and when you really developed the game and, and really felt like, you know what, this is something I really want to continue on in college and, you know, even above that. So, yeah, as you said, I grew up in uh, South Florida, Hollywood, Florida, to be exact, uh, born and raised, um, nine, five, four for, for my whole life. Um, so I started off, um, my freshman year, I went to Catch Yeshiva High School, played under, I think you guys, you guys had Yoga on the show. Yeah, um, sure. So I, uh, so he was my, I, I don't want to say my first like real basketball trainer, but one of, one of my first basketball trainers, uh, I started with him. I want to say in sixth grade. Yeah. Maybe fifth or sixth grade. That's when I really started kind of, uh, falling in love with the game and really started playing at like a serious level. So, um. So fifth and sixth grade, I, uh, it all started with yoga, front yard, um, two hours a day, really going at it. Um, wow. Okay. And that, by the way, that, that's a really early age because mo- like we had yeah. Mike Sweet me on and he said eighth grade. I think Ryan Terrell also said like eighth grade was kind of seventh, eighth grade was when he, so you, you were ready at, at a young age to really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, when I was in middle school, it's like six, seven, and eight. I was always playing other sports, you know, the the flag football, the soccer, the all the all, all the good stuff. So I never really kind of put it like basketball ahead of anything else. But it was just I knew I loved it, so I kind of started taking it a little bit more seriously. In sixth grade, I started working out with yoga. Um, you started. I mean, you you guys know him. I mean, you know how great he is. So he pushed me really, really hard from right from the start. Um, so, and I'm the type of kid that once I kind of get pushed and kind of get going I don't kind of look back so in sixth grade I was like you know what let me kind of take this full throttle so sixth to eighth grade full training a couple hours a day in my front yard a lot of sweating a lot of bumping a lot of pushing a lot of just kind of teaching me teaching me the game honestly at a very young age like you said I guess sixth grade is kind of earlier than most people kind of start so so six six to eighth grade was it was the, the start of everything and then Deciding where to go to high school, I mean, where I'm from is really, honestly, two, maybe three high schools that Jewish kids go to. So you have Hebrew Academy in Miami Beach, and then you have Katz Yeshiva, which was known as Weinbaum at that point. Um, and then you have Hillel and NMB, North Miami. But Hillel wasn't really an option. It was kind of between Hebrew Academy and uh, Katz. And obviously, once Yoga, I, I, I knew Yoga was getting the job there. He started coaching there. It was kind of a done deal. So going into my freshman year. So wait, year, so, so your your first recruiting battle was actually in high school. 
you know, most, most, I, I uh, didn't even say that. I mean, it wasn't much of a recruiting battle. It was pretty much set in stone, but right. And by the way, if, if I've been to catch a Shiva, it's, it's like a college campus. I mean, oh, that's a beautiful right. place. It, it's nicer than the real college campus I'm on now. So, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I honestly, I didn't have that campus. Funny. Wow. I, my four years was zero, zero days on that campus. Our, we were in the the bottom of a of a shul, so I didn't get I didn't get the glory days of uh, cats, you know. Right. I kind of I kind of we kind of slummed it out to say, you know. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you still get back there though. You get you obviously see how yeah, amazing it is now. Yeah, my brother goes now. So, but yeah, as I was saying, so I, I chose cats obviously. So my freshman year, um, me and two of my uh, freshman mates were. Um, the, one of the first three freshmen ever made the varsity team at the school. So we made the varsity team. It was a little bit of a, a little bit of a chaotic start to it just because you, you know how, how that world goes a little bit of, uh, right. I'm sure you're, you're teammates problematic, to be honest. Uh, right. Well, I'm sure just the upperclassmen are looking at like, yeah, exactly. wait a sec. You're, you're a freshman. This is our time. You know, this you'll have your time. So that's gotta be an adjustment right away. And it was also three of us, you know, it wasn't only one or, even two. So once the three of us kind of came in, it was a little bit problematic, but it ended up, thank God, being all great. Um, I started off my freshman year, like just like any other freshman, you know, playing here and there. Um, but kept training, you know, kept really uh, before practice, after practice, every day, just kind of working as hard as I can. I'm trying to, my main, my main thing in, in high school and starting high school, high school especially, was kind of just outworking everybody. So kind of looking at my peers and who everybody else was playing with me and see what they're doing and trying to double it, triple it. Right. Just, well, with actually, you know, which is, which is a big thing. It's, it's not like we've had a lot of, you know, some guests like Ryan, uh, Ryan Terrell and Mike Sweetney, you know, those are six, seven, six, eight guys. You're six, one, six, two, right? I mean, yeah. well, how tall were you as a freshman? As a freshman, I'm, I must have been five, ten, five, nine. Oh, right. not, I mean, that's respectable. Yeah, it, it wasn't like I was over there, you know, like, oh, he's real short. Right, but I'm saying I, I wasn't, as, a, as, a, as a guard, I mean, I'm, I'm an average size even now. But back then I was even below average, you know. Right. I'm saying you weren't some physical. So you no, were obviously no, a shooter, you know, a slasher. You look at me right. now, I'm still not no, uh, any physical specimen, you know. You're not going to see the <laughs> last one. You're like, oh, yeah, he's the one, you know. But um, so I kind of, I mean, with, with that being said, I really – I really had to make up for it, you know. I, I had to work harder than everybody else at the end of the day. I, with that being said, I think every Jewish basketball player to reach a certain level that certain people want to reach has to work harder than everybody else. Just start. We're not we're not born six. Well, we're not born. Yeah. We're not, we don't grow to six six. I mean, Ryan is is an aberration. I mean, there's not no, many. Of course, guys. I mean, you have you have a few, but uh, most of us are gonna peak at five ten in eighth grade, you know. <laughs> Right. Well, uh, Jay's, Jay's still trying to get feet. to the five ten, so he does. You know. That is not. That is inaccurate. Uh, Ari, I sent you a measurement. I sent you the picture. Your time. Oh, you're, you're Ethan. Five. Ethan. He he says he's five nine and a half. No, I do not. Possible? I say I'm five ten even. Oh, I know okay. on your I know on your roster on your on the roster it says six one. I know it. <laughs> well, I mean, listen. I know it that's, says six, one. that's the roster. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm, sure, right? I'm sure you're six three on there. It's fine. Six five. Six five. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> so right. So you're so you you as a freshman you're on you're on the team. Yeah. So um. You know, you know the Cooper Cooper tournament. So sure. yeah, as a freshman, you know, kind of taking everything in, not playing here and there, but not making in the beginning of a season kind of a a huge impact to say, you know, just kind of feeling it out, trying to get to find my role, find my minutes. Um, as the year went on, I started building confidence, building more minutes, and I want to say towards the end of the year, kind of like I want to say the last three or four games of our regular season. Um, in Florida, I actually hurt my ankle, um, twisted my ankle, just a regular ankle sprain, nothing crazy, but missed like a week or so, a week and a half, which pushed me back. But it ended up being that when I got back, I really kind of, kind of just came in with a lot of confidence after dirt. So right before around the Sarachek time, um, I actually started starting my freshman year at Sarachek, which is any Jewish basketball player knows as a freshman at Sarachek, no matter yeah. what, no matter what tier you're in, tier one, tier two, tier three. I mean, it was just a, it was a really cool, cool experience, a really big deal, you know. Um, it, was, it, was, it was cool uh, to experience that as a freshman. Honestly, I think I was must have been. 14. Did you did you find did you find the moment to be very like a little bigger than you were ready for at that time? I mean, the freshman year. Honestly, 14. I didn't. I mean, 
I thought I would, you know, everybody has those first game jitters, but I happened to, you know, kind of take that and ran with it. That was kind of, in, in a sense, the start for me kind of um, drifting away from the pack in a sense, you know, I mean, everybody wants to be kind of a great, good player, but I think my freshman year towards the end at Saracek, I think I led our team in scoring at Saracek, um, just kind of was starting to get known a little bit, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, right. Um, so that's kind of when people are like, oh, he, he, he's kind of good. The kid can play, you know, but, but even at that freshman level, I, I still wasn't someone who was like, oh, that, that kid, you know, looking at, looking from the outside in, that's not someone people are looking at and say, oh, he, he could play division one. He, he could play in college even, you know, I wasn't even looked at as a freshman. I'm five ten, as I said, maybe soaking wet was 140 pounds, you know, <laughs> like, Looking on the outside, they're like, "Oh, this kid—he—he he, he could potentially be a good player, you know." But right, but I, I guess that that Saracek time really probably gave you confidence going into oh, your sophomore year, right? 100%. To feel that, to feel having that spotlight on you, and you said you, you held your own as a freshman, which is which is pretty incredible. And now, also your your regular season schedule, you're not uh, obviously you're not only playing against other Jewish schools. Oh no, no, we're playing. We are playing it top level schools i mean i don't want to say night in night out because you always have the, even at the non-jewish school level you always have those schools that are just not great you know the small private right. schools who can't recruit but then you know if you play one team who's not great you could on that that next week you're playing one of the best teams in the state I, I'll, I'll tell you guys actually a crazy story as, as the story goes on of my senior year you guys will really like that story i'll tell you that one when we get oh, look at he's like a, he's like a pro he's already he's Love teaching it. us i like yeah, that I, I, I got to give a little cliffhanger here. You know? Right, right. That's good. Yeah, unlike um, Ari, who just gives away all the good information right. in the first minute of the show. <laughs> exactly. I want to right, keep them uh, tuned in. I'm going to see about that. Right. So let me ask. <laughs> let me ask you this question because I, I think this is interesting. You know, the the Gabe Lifers of the world who are now excelling in college. I mean, until Gabe Lifer was was 18, 19, 20 years old because he went to you know went to Israel, he never played against a public school kid in yeah. a in a in a refereed game. I mean, barring some whatever, you know, tournament, whatever. Right. But um, how different was that for you having the opportunity where your entire high school career, you know, I think, look, there's, there's, you talk about Jewish ball players. There's obviously this sense of like, eh, well, yeah, he's good for a Jew or he's good right. playing against other Jews right. or whatever. You had the opportunity to play against, you know, regular kids right. your entire high school career. How much confidence does sort of that give you? you go, well, I can't, it's not, I'm not just balling at Saracek. Like I'm balling, you know, I'm balling against whoever uh, in these other games. Like what, what's that like? I, I think especially, you know, we have a big uh, viewership here in the uh, Northeast, uh, New York area and, and guys just don't know. Well, I mean, I want to say more than even Saracek confidence. I think I started playing travel basketball at AU at around the eighth grade, my eighth grade year. And because in middle school, you, you really only play mostly Jewish school, maybe a couple, you know, middle schools. But at the middle school level, the non-Jewish middle schools, you're not playing top talent, you, you know what right. I mean? So not until I started playing AU, I started kind of branching out into the, to, to the non-Jewish basketball world. And I think it was, my, I want to say, talking about confidence, I want to say it was my eighth grade year going into freshman year. Maybe, maybe, yeah, it, it had to be my eighth grade year going into the freshman year. We actually played an AU tournament in up in Orlando in the Disney Wild World of Sports. And as a kid, as an eighth grader, like that was like the greatest tournament, you know? Uh, I mean, you had thousands of teams, thousands of players in and out. You had the the biggest stadiums. I mean, they just did the NBA bubble there. Right. Like, it's just a very well known area. I mean, you're, you're so going there as an eighth grader. I was in. I, I was. I was starstruck, literally, just by the gym, not even by the players. You know, I'm walking in the gym, like, oh, my God, there's six gyms here, seven there, Mickey Mouse running around. So <laughs> it was just – that was a crazy experience. And it happened to be that I really just really killed that tournament, like really just came in and was our team's leading scorer, was one of the leading scorers at the tournament. So, and that, I think, more than anything, before even my freshman year, kind of really gave me the confidence that not only can I do this in, in a sense in the Jewish world, but the non-Jewish world as well. And that was a real booster. And then on top of it, once my ninth grade year hit and, and I really took a big stride at the end of it, it, it all kind of just kind of building up. Like right. Kind of and that, that was probably all, like you said, all the hard work you were putting in. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you, you, you made yourself. I mean, your, your game is, you know, I, would assume, I would assume you're predominantly probably a great shooter, right? That's probably yeah. something that you worked on a lot. What did you say? 
What gave it away? The, the suitor. Right, I don't know. This, <laughs> that you're six two and uh, 140 pounds. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm like he's probably not a banger. He's probably yeah, uh, he's probably, probably, probably goes from downtown. Too, so yeah, we're, we're very good here. We're very very on the uptake here. A little so. different than the Mike Sweeney story. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So then, so then, sophomore year. So how did how did it progress? So, or, after know, my freshman year, I had a lot of confidence. Team was, you know, I was looking to kind of be that guy, you know, my sophomore year. Even though I was young, I mean, people were just looking at me like, oh, he, he can really play. So my sophomore year, I was really excited to get going. And I remember like it was yesterday, I really do. I'm sitting in my front yard getting ready for another yoga workout. My dad's there and he already knew at the time. They said, hey, Ethan, we, we, I got to sit down with you. And, and granted, I, I, he's coached me AU and high school and just trained me for the last four or five years. So I'm, he, was, he was like an older brother to me. So they sent me down and said, hey, yoga is moving to New York. And my- It's son, like breaking up with your first girlfriend. Literally, I, it was probably worse than that, honestly. Breaking up with her was probably easier. <laughs> uh, I mean- You I wanted mean, to get rid of her. Yeah, exactly. If she's listening, I'm sorry, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but so that was something that really kind of kind of shook a lot for me, you know, I'm like, I was, I was comfortable. I was comfortable with the coach. I was comfortable with the school. I was comfortable where I was heading. And that kind of just was like a, like a ball drop on me really. And I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I mean, there was no really any other options. It was, you're going back to Yeshiva, you're cats to Yeshiva, you're going to, you're, you will figure out who the coach is. And we'll go from there. Um, so it ended up being a, so we ended up trying to figure out who the next coach was going to be. He ended up hiring a step it up guy uh, by the name of John Dunn. Uh, I don't think you know he had any works there anymore, but he was a good guy, really good player. Actually played in Northwood, really really talented guy. But just kind of had a little bit of coaching problems. Was kind of young. Just right, he probably he didn't have that experience. I'm right, sure, he, like... he wasn't necessarily the best guy for me at that time. And I probably did something that not many people ever did in the Jewish world, especially in the Jewish basketball world. I can't, even the Ryan Terrell, I can't think of any who really did what, it, what I did. And we came together, me and my dad, um, and even Yogev, and we're just like, well, what can we do to kind of put me in the best situation? And it happened to be that um, someone who's worked at Step It Up for a while, by the name of Casey Woolup, I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, um, just a trainer there, worked there for, for a while. What, it probably was right, right, Yoga's right hand man, really, for years. So I kind of knew him very well. And he had taken the head coaching job at a school by the name of North Broward Prep, non Jewish school, regular prep school um, in Park, uh, was in Parkland, Coconut Creek, Florida. Um, told me, he said, Hey, we're looking, we have a team here. Um, we're, we're pretty good. And they were kind of at, at the, at the competition level, like regarding who they were playing, we're kind of in the same league as, as Cats, just given, just given who uh, um, the league that Cats was in, you know, like Cats is in a regular league, so they were in the regular league also. But just they had more exposure to better teams, better tournaments. They were playing in, in, in Christmas. So the, the competition might not have been that much better, just like the, the, the program right, just, might have been better. Just, just I want to say the seriousness of it, right? The program, the resources, the tur- they were playing in some Christmas tournaments. They weren't playing in the Shoals basement, right? Exactly. They, were, <laughs> they weren't playing in, in the outside court, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> so it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah, it's not that bad. You're right, you're right. <laughs> um, so I decided to make the move there. I mean, it was, it was, looking back at it, it was one of the best moves I've made just to, to prepare me for what, I, what I've been doing for the last four years in a sense. I kinda... By the way, that that's to parallel an earlier guest we had, Tamir Goodman. He uh, also, you know, he mentioned that during in high school he was he was at uh, you know at the high school in Baltimore, and then he ended up going to a, a different school because he needed to to get that competition a little better, and he just needed to push himself a little further. So similar yeah. to your situation, yeah. I mean, it was just like that. I mean, I really for the first time in my life went outside my bubble. You know, I mean, I for. The, for the last five years, I've had the same the same friends, the same teachers, the same people. I, I never really met anybody new. And it wasn't like I was going with my best two friends to, the, to this new prep school and we're going to start together. I was really dropped off at school and said, hey, go make friends. Hey, go go meet new people. I mean, and, and looking back, it was really it was really crazy. It was really, really crazy. I mean, it was a crazy experience. I came in as a, this little kid, no one knew. Some of these kids have been at that middle school, at that school for years, trying to 
make it up to that varsity level. I came in, started every game, was a top three scorer on the team, led the team in assists, rebounds, just like really, really led our team um, at that level also. So that was also another confidence booster for me going forward, just given that um, I can do it at another school, you know, it wasn't just get uh, – uh, limited to doing it at this one school. Or limited to so this. Doing this is yeah. what year? Yeah, year. What year is this? This is my sophomore year. So this all happened within. Literally, this happened crazy quick. It probably all happened literally within three weeks. Because I I started the year at Cats. Started at Cats. Right. Started classes. Started practices. Literally everything. And as practices got on and everything got on, I was just like, I, I need something new. I I. I I mean, people were just weren't taking it as seriously as I was. Right. Well, you you had higher aspirations. You you were not just exactly. looking. You know, people you were looking for something bigger. So exactly, a hundred percent. When when did when did you like really think about a Division One college? Like you know that you had you could you know your game could get to that level because you know Division One is that's big time. So when when did that really you know come into your mind that this is something that you know if I push myself if I work hard enough I can really achieve that. I want to say my 10th grade, after this 10th grade year, my 10th grade summer, it happened to be we were playing at, I don't remember what team it was, a, very, a team in Florida, and one of the top AU programs just happened to be there looking at some talent, and I happened to have a good game, right, hit, uh, things just fell into place correctly, and, and I ended up playing for, for, at that time, one of the top programs in the country, um, an AU program by the name of the Florida Vipers. Um, who who are some of the players who've come from that program that, that you know um, you may have heard program, of? Program, I'm trying to think. A uh, kid, uh, you want my like my grade or before that? Yeah, team? whoever, whoever. So like for whoever. my grade, my team happened to be a kid by the name Raekwon Gray, who just declared for the NBA draft two weeks ago. Went to Florida State, uh, was second on the team in scoring. I think led the team in rebounds. Wow. Um, the Florida State starting point guard Anthony Polite, also top five on the team in store, scoring was on our team. A kid by the name Victor Uyelamuno was a top 100 center in the country, went to USC, is now at Towson. Um, a kid by the name Gerald Butler, committed to Butler, played at Butler for two years, then uh, transferred to Elon University in North Carolina. We had a kid by the name Jordan Wright, who happens to be at Con University of Kentucky for football, will probably be a top NFL draft pick in the next couple of years. So he, he's not 140 pounds, probably. No, he's no. probably 245. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, <laughs> he's two Ethan Laskies. Yeah, yeah, he's double the Lasko, right. Um, so who else do we have? I'm trying to think who else. We had a kid. Oh, Jason Strong uh, starts at Northeastern University. So you're, you're playing. These are some big-time players, and you're holding oh, your yeah. own in this team. We had probably, I want to say, eight players on the team, nine players on the team. All of them played Division One. every single one of them. Right, so this so playing with playing with them, you felt like this is something. You know what? I'm I'm holding my own. I'm doing well. I'm I'm competing, and you're excelling. Yeah. So so my tenth grade summer was my first year playing with them. Um, we ended up winning the Under Armour circuit, which was like a big big deal. Like we were ranked number one in the country, and all AAU teams, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, we were number one, the number one team in the country, best team AAU team in the country, which was like crazy wow. at the time. We were just, we were just well, a very you must well have had some great free gear. I can't imagine all the, uh, <laughs> great free gear. probably still fits me, honestly. Right. <laughs> um, but, um, so that was just a crazy experience. I mean, it was like even practicing against the team, I'm just getting so, so much better. You know, you're, you, I'm looking across from someone who's going to go play division one and start for four years. So just every practice, which we practiced pretty much every day was just me getting better. You know, it, even if I'm over there and, losing the ball I'm like all right next play i'm not losing it next play i'm going at him. it it just didn't right. matter it just really built my confidence to another level at a sense and then i started hearing from a couple of division one schools division three schools the ivy leagues the patriot leagues just kind of getting a couple calls so i kind of like had kind of had my foot in the door at the division one level after that summer and i kind of really 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 was confident going into that in my junior year of, of high school um and then come junior year, I was kind of – North Bar Prep was a really good year for me, kind of opened that bubble for me. But I realized that I, I wanted to – I wanted to go back. You know, I wanted to – I wanted to – I realized that I can do what I wanted to do and also be with my friends and also kind of do something that – you, you, you missed your mom's chicken soup, basically, right? Okay. 
I didn't want to say it, but yeah, that, that's exactly what you I You can mean. give a shout out to her chicken soup. Right. I'm sure it's great. Uh, the chicken soup is phenomenal. <laughs> um, but so, so I realized that I could kind of keep working out and doing what I'm doing at, at, at camps. You know, I kind of, I was waking up before school, going to work out before practice, just figuring out a kind of routine that, that let me get, have the best of both worlds. You know, I kind of, I opened my bubble. I met new people. I was happy where I was at socially, mentally. And I, I figured, you know, let, let, let me go back and try to do something we've never done. And, and we really did. I mean, my junior year was, was really, really special. It was really special. I mean, we were, we, we played really well at the, at the, at, at the, um, at, we didn't play really well. I don't want to say that. We Cooper? played, we overachieved at Cooper. Um, I think we came in as like a five seed. Just we're playing really good, good basketball there. Ended up being that when we came home, like you guys said, we, we don't play Jewish school. You know, we play Jewish school maybe once every three weeks. So when we came home, it, it was, it, it was kind of go time for me. Cause at the end of the day, playing in the Cooper, Cooper Max tournament, wasn't going to get me exposure, you know, playing against Jewish teams is not going to get me the college, ex- college exposure. It's the one when I play the non-Jewish teams with the with the better talent in a sense. Even though there may not be better talent, it was thought of that there's better talent just because it's the non-Jewish right. team. So so once I got home, I really kind of put it into a different gear. I mean, my junior year was crazy. Um, I, I was just I was just doing things that thank God I, I didn't think I was able to do. I mean, I, I was top ten in the state in scoring, um, and we won our first ever school district championship. I mean, I know Yogev says he's he's the best ever to go to Cats and Shiva, but um, <laughs> he never he never won a, he never won a district championship. And you had some really good players come through Cats. I mean. Ellie, Ellie Madman, who played at YU. My cousin Daniel also um, it was a really good player. My cousin Jonah was a really good player. Um, there, was just, there was just a lot of good players who came through, and just no one really wanted a, 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 I mean, a district title. And to do that at our school was just, just really, really special. I mean, we were playing against, as I said, non-Jewish school, top-level talent, and Cats was never, ever looked at as a threat in that league, ever. You know, we never looked at right. as a threat. I remember you got uh, you guys over. You probably overachieved as a team, even though you oh, were you were leading it. But hundred percent. I mean, those kids were like they just they just not found enough. I, I think when I kind of when I when they realized that hey, I, I was taking this so seriously, they kind of got on board and was like, hey, we could really do something special, and and that got them to just work harder, work to like their 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 potential. I mean, my I mean, I miss I missed the big part of the story. I'm sorry about that, but. Going into my junior year, I wasn't really going back to – we didn't have a coach at the time. The coach was kind of – at Cats, the coach was kind of – we didn't know who we were hiring. So we reached out to a guy by the name of Brian White, who happened to be a really good coach in South Florida at that time. He, was, he also worked that stuff up. He was coaching uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Known for their football, but it was a really, really right. good – it was a good basketball program. And we ended up convincing him to come to, to, come to Cats. So he came. I went with him. So like I said, we just accomplished a lot of things. I mean – after we played in the district championship on a Saturday night, post Shabbat, um, it was all the way from where, where where most of the kids on our team lived. It was around an hour drive, and the game was I want to say like nine o'clock. We showed up eight thirty, eight forty five. The other teams like, oh, I guess they're not coming. Right. Yeah, they, they they almost I think they right, they're like, is this a championship game? Where where's this other team? I don't know if you ever seen Kicking, the movie Kicking and Screaming, um, where they show up late with all the the meat the meat blood on their shirts and stuff. And that's how kind of that's how we kind of showed up, you know. We, we, um, so we came there. I, I know no one thought we were winning that game. I, I know it for sure. So you, you obviously you elevated your, like you said your your teammates saw you as the leader of the team not not only scoring but like the leader of how determined you were and you you elevated your teammates that they probably played above their heads because they knew how much you wanted this and that you know you know reflected on their games as well. I really believe so. I don't like to say it arrogantly uh, arrogantly, but I really believe that that helped them a lot. I mean, in that game alone, in that district championship alone, I think I don't know if it was double overtime or triple overtime. Wow. Um, but a kid in our team, Jared Stern, hit like the biggest shot of his life to put it into overtime or double overtime, and like it just elevated a lot of people that 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 year. I mean, we won and we hosted the regional quarterfinals for the first time in school history, where we played probably one of, if not the most prominent high schools in the in the state, maybe even in the country. Um, Sagemont. Um, I don't, I'll just name you some players who played there. Fabricio Mello, 
went to Syracuse, got drafted by the Celtics. He's like seven, one or two. Or... One. Will right. Shee was there at a point. Um, played at Indiana. Prince Ali played at UCLA. Um, Gigi Golden played at UCLA. These, these don't sound like you know Mordechai Schwartz's yeah, and uh, Yehuda Cohen's. Yeah, yeah. More Gushies and Schwartz. These are these are real. <laughs> um, a lot of good, really good players. I mean, my point guard here actually who is my best friend now was the starting point guard on that team. Um, so I played him in high school. You're smart. If you can't beat him, join him. That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Right. <laughs> exactly. So um, we played them at our, and they were a prominent team, but they happened to lose their district championship to another prominent team. So they were the two seed, and we were the one seed. So we're a little small Jewish school playing at the local middle school, and this <laughs> powerhouse comes in, and we're hosting the game. We're over there playing Hatikva before the game, and these kids are like, "What is going on here?" I to this day, I remember I was talking to, to, to my roommate about it. And he's like. Dude, like, what were you guys playing before the game? Like, that wasn't no a national anthem. I was like, you don't even want it. It's the Israeli national anthem. Dude. Right, right. It's 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 not like a rap song to get you motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little it, different, it, yeah. It definitely didn't get them in the mood, but uh, it, it was a special, special experience. I mean, we did lose the game. Don't get me wrong. We definitely lost that game. Right, but, um, it, it was, but still, what what an incredible yeah. experience. So, you know, so, and I want I want to touch on something there because I think this is important for people. Uh, especially yeshiva kids who, you know, kind of feel like they're on that upper echelon of talent. Um, it's one thing to say, look, I realized for myself, I could develop a workout program. Uh, you know, I have the right stuff on the side. I'm on the right AAU team. So, right. you know, for, for me, I'm going to go back to cats, but like, what about, you know, you touched on the exposure. I mean, how big, that must've been probably the hardest part of the decision. Like if I go back to cats, am I going to lose the eyeballs? Um, how well, big of a concern think, was that? What Ethan was doing was he was betting on himself. I mean, he. Yeah, he, I really was. I mean, I think, to be honest, the smartest move would have been to stay. Uh, would have been to stay, use the resources, use the, like you said, the eyeballs, use the exposure. But I, I said to myself, you know what? If they want me, they're going to they're gonna find me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm putting up good enough numbers, if I'm doing what I got to do and I'm winning, um, that, that's all we need to do. But, I, I think. By the way, Ethan. Point, that is verbatim what Ryan Terrell said. Same exact thing. Yeah. He said the same thing. He's like, if we're if we're if I'm doing what I'm doing, if I'm winning and, and I'm playing the game to uh, to the level that I feel I'm, I, I'm capable of, they're gonna find me. When he was he's talking about the NBA scout, so it's the same same yeah. type of of confidence, you know, that you guys have and shared, and you know that's something that you see come out. So yeah. how did that? So then tell us about the Indiana experience. You know how that. I just want to tell you guys one more story. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, we could be here all night. Don't worry. We're yeah, good. He teased, yeah, he goes, teased so. the senior year story. We yeah, can't leave right. the senior year story. So my senior year, again, we, it happened to be we happened to get a little bit a little bit screwed with our with our schedule because they moved our district. So in the district championship that we won my junior year, we didn't have – there was good there was good level of talent, but we didn't, the two best teams in the state were in one district, and that was Sagemont, like I just said. And a team right. in Westminster. So they ended up breaking those teams up and splitting them up. So they put Westminster in our district. So now we're sitting like, okay, so now there's zero chance we're, we're, we're ever winning this thing. So it happened to be, we played them three times that year. My senior year. We, we, the first time I, I, want, uh, I played, we lost by probably 30. No, like not, not even inflating numbers. We lost by 30. The second time I didn't play, we lost by literally 50. And our, we finished our year. We won our first district uh, game. So we're playing them in the semifinals of our district. Same team. They had six Division One players on their team. Six Division One players. And we had one. Um, and they're, they're looking to beat us by 50. They beat us by 50 three times that year, twice that year. Right. It happened to be I, I don't know what happened, but I guess Hashem was literally just on our side at that point. We were up at half, and it was it was we didn't win the game. I don't want to say we won the game, but it was close to being one of the craziest upsets in like high school history. We lost by six, I think, that game, and like that place was going bananas. Like it, it was just that was probably to this day my favorite high school moment ever. Was was, that a home game or a road game? It was a road game. It was just a road game, and everybody was just shocked. Like, it it was just something that was like – I literally, to this day, I still believe that if we would have won that game, there are 100% no doubt in my mind, it would have been a 30 for 30. 
Like there would have been one of those, like, 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 what if I told you uh, this little David beat Goliath, something like that. I, to this day, I still, I still put. It well, listen, there. listen, us, us Jews, we're good at changing the outcome of stories. So yeah. you know, as we go on, you won that game. It's okay. We still lost. It was a moral. Right. We'll yeah, make the there's, sixty there's for sixty or something. It, but that doesn't matter. Right. That was a cool way to playing, cap off my senior year. Playing against six Division One, you know, players. Yeah, that's obviously. Really, that was a really cool moment in my, in my high school career. It really capped it off for me. Right. So tell us, tell us about, first of all, why did you decide on Indiana to, to, to start your career? And then, you know, that experience, you know, being in a, in a major, major college basketball program. Um, so, I mean, after my senior year of high school, I didn't really, I, I, I kind of messed myself up to be completely honest with you guys um, in, in a few ways. And then in around like three ways, the first one would be after my junior year, after we played that stage month school, the head coach of that high school was dying for me to come there like please come we, we'd love to have you you'd be great on our team all this and and that school just got unbelievable exposure division one coaches lined up at practices lined up at open gyms at their school so almost 100 percent would have had a, a few different division one offers if i would have went there at a high school my senior year but Kind of figured two high schools was enough. Three. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know if I wanted to do a third. I was just, I was pretty stubborn. So that was one thing that to this day, I I, I regret a little bit. And then after my senior year, as as most high schoolers do, I didn't take my academics that seriously throughout my high school career. So it kind of nixed a lot of the, out of the, a lot of the playing level that I could play at because at the end of the day, I wasn't going to play at a high major school and the school that I was talking to was mostly Ivy Leagues, if not Patriot Leagues, which are high academic schools. And I just, I just didn't cut it. I just didn't cut it academically. At the end of the day- well, you, you had all your focus was on basketball. I mean, yeah, you know, it's hard it really, to, really to juggle. That's something that I would tell most high school kids now to really focus on school because at the end of the day, they can pull a lot of strings at college, but they're pulling most of their strings for five stars at, at Duke and Kentucky. <laughs> you get down to the Ivy Leagues and the Patriot Leagues, they're gonna pull strings, but it, you got to keep it close, as I tell people. You really got to keep it close with your numbers, with the ACT scores, with the GPAs. And to be completely honest, I just wasn't even close. Right. Um, I, I just, you, I just, you were more about your points per game. Yeah, not, uh, yeah. Harvard, Harvard was, was like a, very, 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 very right. close, not over. But, but, but my, my GPA, my, my ACT score wasn't quite there at that point. Yeah, Harvard said maybe you want to try Howard. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, uh, <laughs> Harvard said maybe Hartford. Um, right, right, right. So I, I don't know. I mean, they, they asked if I hold on. No knock to our listeners from Hartford. It's a yeah, great city. Or, or Howard. Awesome. Or Howard. <laughs> right. Uh, so that so that kind of slid my options, and I was offered to go to um, a prep school out at, at IMG Academy, a very very well known prep school. Which, sure. Which also would have got me. It would have got my grades better. It would have really got a lot of exposure for me at the division. Wait, it would have got your grades better, like they just make them better, or you would. All right, no, come I'm on. I can't, divul- can't divulge these things yeah. on the air. Right. Stop it. <laughs> All right, IMG, please don't listen to this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it just would have helped me a lot, um, resource wise, environment wise. So Yesh- Yeshiva University is not even. It's not even in your in dictionary at this point. It's not something. At that point, it really wasn't. Um, I was a naive kid, to be honest. I, I, I but they also weren't the program. I mean, this is how many years ago? This is. Oh, four yeah. years. they definitely weren't the program they are now. One hundred percent. I mean, Elliot right. getting started. He was just building what he's what he's built right now. Um, but at that at that level, I mean, why you was you know was was why you um, right. And that was, it's really not why you. At the end of the day, why you is, is why you. You know, you say it with a different. Right, and it's 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 Division three at that moment. It's not the whole story it is now. So so you get so you decide on on Indiana. You want to continue your education there. And I decided in Indiana. Uh, some people who I knew helped me out. Knew a couple people there. Knew the assistant coaches. So they said it would be a really good situation for me, just environment wise. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of Jews who go to Indiana, religious or not. Just they have a Chabad, a Hello. They, 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 it kind of had everything, you know. It, right. It had, did, for me and it had an it had an unbelievable basketball program at the end of the day. Did you know before you went, like what? Uh, did you know you were on the team? Maybe you were on the team, a 50-50 shot. Like what? So, so what were you I, looking at? I was known as like what 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 is called like a preferred walk on. So it's someone that like I knew I was on a team before I was going. He comes in the good. Meaning, I'm saying the preferred. You're walking on with some nice shoes on. That's what. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Just a bad joke. Sorry. 
no, yes, no, yes. No, bad no, internet no. and bad joke. Thank you, Ari. You could just uh, turn the camera off and uh, all right. I'm gone for the day. Yeah, go so, ahead. So when you say that, so you didn't go. There was no doubt that you were going to be on the team. Obviously, you didn't get a scholarship or, or right. Um, but you no, knew you were on the team. Here. You weren't. You weren't going to go there and get cut and then be like, oh damn. No, I, I was not going there not to play basketball, not to be a frat star. I'll tell you that much. Right. Um, <laughs> um, so I went there, and it was just—it was one of the craziest years, just, just ever. I mean, I wasn't playing much at all. It, I don't even want to say I wasn't playing much because that sounds like I, I had an opportunity to play, but I just wasn't playing at all. But you're you're uh, you're on you're on the team. You're in practice. Well, These I'm in practice. guys, right? I mean. Traveling with the team. I'm, 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 this is guys who are going to the NBA. I mean, this is like the real. This is the top of the, you know Big Ten. The kids that still, the kids that, uh, that I came in my freshman year with, I'm very close with still, and just you'll see that you hopefully you'll see their name being called or uh, definitely in the G League NBA. I mean, they're they're gonna go play pro and make a lot of money playing this game for sure. But I mean, the experiences that year was uh, that year was a big year for me in regards to working out because I just never had those resources in high school. Correct. And I, and I feel like my freshman year, I really took the biggest jump in my game that I ever had like between ninth and 10th grade. I mean, 10th, 11th, right, 11th. your competition level is, is like, I mean, you can't get better. I don't, not only my competition level, just access to a five-star gym, a five-star weight coach, a five-star eating program, just a five-star everything. And, and it really, really helped me at that point to get to another level. Um, just shooting 500 to 1,000 shots a night, literally just being in the gym day in, day out. Just was 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 really really good for me. I mean, there was and, and and the experiences at that school were just crazy. I mean, I remember playing. We were playing at Michigan State, um, and that Michigan Michigan State team happened to be Miles Bridges, Jaron Jackson, um, this kid by the name Gabe Brown, Xavier Tillman. Uh, who else did we play? Um, that, that My, Miles Bridges is like he's a yeah, high guy every night. Literally dunked on one of my friend's head. Like it, it, it was just a. <laughs> crazy and, and the stadium was just crazy but even more than that i remember at our stadium we played duke that year with um wait, wait hold on hold on ethan wait we just have to understand it so ethan lasco this jewish kid from florida you're he just said we played duke like that's a yeah that's a pretty it's wow a, moment yeah, yeah. Like... That, in the same sentence coming on out that i played against duke is pretty crazy i mean that team was marvin bagley wendell carter trayvon duval gary trent jr grayson allen like so when Listen, they were up like the NBA, did you get in the game? <laughs> I did not get in the game. Uh, that game was close. We really lost by like two or four points. It was an unlike that was my first real experience of Assembly Hall, like the famous Assembly Hall. Right. Up to that point, we're, we're, we're playing a non-conference schedule, so you're not playing really the top tier. And and once Duke comes in the building, I mean that place was eighteen thousand, twenty thousand full. You couldn't see a space in the crowd. You couldn't hear yourself think and. It, it, it was really, it, it was a crazy, crazy year. Right, it would have been better if you got blown out, so you could have gotten in the game. Yeah, I was hoping it was in my third year. Right, right, he's on the bench. He's, like, cheering when Bagley's, like, putting one down. <laughs> Way to go. Wait, how, how did you like wearing those candy cane uh, warm-ups? Uh, that's, uh, how, how was your look in that? I mean, those things are ugly. And <laughs> they are outdated. Um, but but it's, it's, it's historical, so I'll give it that. I mean, it does have history on the side, but they don't look good. I'll tell you that much. Right, <laughs> you're not wearing them to class. Yeah, I wasn't wasn't wearing my rip off candy stripes to class. Right, so so this is, I mean, obviously the the experience is is unparalleled, unmatched. I mean, you, you're so you, your Division One dream. You obviously got into some some games and you you played. I'm sure you had some baskets and just that atmosphere. And then was it you were there one year and that's when you decided after that you were transferring to uh, Manhattan. Yeah, so um, that first year in around like April time. I was, I was considering it. I was like, hey, can, I know I can play at this level. Maybe not at this school, but I know I can play at this level. I was contemplating a lot with a bunch of different coaches, my, my dad, a lot, a lot of people. And it ended up being that, that April, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick it out. I love the place. I love my friends. I'm really going to stick it out. And I went back for the summer, for the summer workouts in around uh, June-ish, June-ish time. And... I stayed there for around three weeks, four weeks, and I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't do it. I can't be, I, I can't be a cheerleader. I, I just can't do it. And I, I literally upped and went in, in the middle of the summer and just was like, you know what? I, I don't have a place to go. I don't like this is college. It's not like I'm like you go find a high school. Like I, I wanted to play, and I, at the end of the day, I did get a college degree. 
So I literally just upped and went with no plan at all. Um, literally just hoping and believing in myself that I'll find the right place and the right place will find me. So, I mean, thank God I really did. Um, I was given an opportunity for the last three years to really do something that no, no one, not a lot of Jewish, Jewish players get to do. Not, not even, I don't even want to say Jewish players, but not a lot of basketball players. Right. I mean, playing at the Division One level is, is a really, really small percentage. And, I mean, my first year here, uh, to put it all into perspective, my first year here at Manhattan College, I want to say I played in 22-plus games, 20-something games. And I'm, at Indiana, I think I played in two. Right. So, like, just to put it all into, like, perspective, I mean, I, I was you, you had that itch. You, I mean, Indiana, yeah. the program was great, the story, but you, you, want, you were a baller. You wanted, wanted to get it, out there. I wanted to give, be given at least an opportunity. And once they said, hey, we're going to give you an opportunity, I think I, I, in my head, I was really, all right, that's all I need. I don't need anything else. Just, I need to hear that word. The word opportunity was huge for me, especially that year, figuring out where to go. I mean, that's all I needed. I knew my, how hard I worked, and I knew I was going to find my role and figure out a way to get onto the court at a consistent level. I mean, playing in 22 games was a real, real big start for me, you know, and that was a real, real jump for me coming from Indiana. I mean, I played, in, like I said, two games to go – in the 20s, you know, 20s at a Division One level, playing that many games is like it really was a really big deal. For sure. What 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 um? And I mean, I think I know. You know, this was uh, there was a huge Sports Center moment. So tell us about your biggest your biggest right. moment at Manhattan College. So, so, I, so that so this um so my junior year, which was last year, um was kind of when I took that jump to kind of rather than playing in necessarily games, it started focusing more on the minutes in those games. You know what I'm saying? So. My first game of my junior year, which is last year, we're playing home at Delaware uh, versus Delaware State. Um, our first game, I played, I scored nine points in six minutes. Um, had a really, really good game. Sounds like three three pointers. I'm guessing three three pointers exactly. <laughs> it happened to be a really, really. I'm not good at math, but I figured that's probably yeah, that, that was a pretty easy one. It happened <laughs> to be that it, it was it was pro- it was really like. A monumental moment in my ba- moment in my basketball career, just because I I felt like I did I did what I worked for, you know, not necessarily whatever it was, but I I, I really I did it, you know, in a sense. And it happened to be I did it, but I also didn't do it because I I tore my foot. Um, yeah. I, I was going to save a ball and I, I jumped onto the scorer's table, and if this is my foot, my foot kind of went like this and jumped back. And um, if, if, if like this is my foot, I tore my whole ligament here. My bones did, did you know right away? You knew right away you did something pretty bad? I thought I broke my toe at the time. And I was like, okay, I, I can deal with a broken toe. Um, and right I got after, nine others. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I can figure that out. <laughs> um, right after the game, everybody was like, oh, my God, you play in the game. You know, I was getting interviewed by ESPN and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm on cloud nine. Literally right after the game, I'm like, the adrenaline kind of wore off. I'm like, whoa, this, this is hurting. Like, this is hurting more than I than I thought. And the doctor sees me and touches something on my foot and is like, all right, we'll, we'll go get an MRI. But later I found out that he, he, he knew it kind of right away, what it was, and he told our, our athletic trainer, but they didn't really tell me. Um, so the They next wanted day, you to enjoy your moment, I mean. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, literally. I mean, the next day we were, we were just kind of driving around from doctor, doctor, MRI, to MRI, I get a call. I remember it also like it was yesterday. I'm on crutches and, and they're like, hey, Ethan, you need surgery. I'm like, surgery? What do you, what do you need surgery? I, I've never had surgery my whole life. I'm like, I don't need surgery. I, I, I broke my toe. Like, I don't need anything. They're like, no, you tore your list break is what it's called. Um, it's, it, it's pretty much the ligament that kind of lets you push right. off your foot and move kind of laterally. So I was like, all right, that seems like a pretty big deal. <laughs> um, Ended up getting surgery the next week. Uh, was out for three months. I want to say three and a half months. So it really, t- it really, it really, it really took a toll on me. Because um, that season, I was like, after that game, I was just prepared to just kind of take it again to the next level. You know, I was like, right. wow. I set, I set a foundation to kind of do great things here. Ended up getting hurt that year. I mean, worked my way back. Played in a couple games at the end. Scored in a couple points, but just. Just never kind of found my groove at the end of the year, you know. Giving up three months when people are working out and, and playing in games, it, it's hard to really get back in rhythm, let alone get back in, in, a, in, a, in the rotation. So, I mean, my senior year, I, I, again, I'm very confident I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get start playing well. 
get him a good get get have a good role. Um, so this past year, I played in every game, started in a few. Um, uh, was, how did your How did your team do? We did. We didn't do great. I mean, we we, we kind of underachieved, in my opinion. We were, we had a lot a lot of talent. Um, a lot, a lot of time. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time given COVID oh, to sure. prepare. So it's kind of that, you know, one of those things where you have a lot of talent, but not a lot of time under your belt, you know. Um, but I mean, I had a good year. Thank God. Uh, I was top 20 in our conference in three point percentage. Had, had a good year, you know. I mean, did some things that I really did start in games in college and in and, and, and big games, you know, it wasn't really just like I'm coming in a senior night and just starting to start. Right. You're, 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 you're an integral member of the team. Yeah. So tell, what, what was the, what, tell us about that tournament game where you, uh, you know, right. so, found yourself on sports center, which is, which is yeah. another pretty cool moment. <laughs> yeah. That was really, really cool. Um, so we're playing in our conference tournament. Um, and we just had had, I just had had it happen, happen like two games before that we played Fairfield in the conference tournament. And we played Fairfield our last two games of the year. And it happened to be that I, I ended off the year pretty well. I just had two solid, really solid games. So I was, I was feeling confident going into that game. Um, it happened to be we uh, we started off the game really, really well. Like went up like 12, I think, in the, in the, in the first half. They kind of cut it back. I, was, I, I played, I want to say, I didn't play much in the first half. I want to say like three or four minutes in that first half. Um, it happened to be that he, he, he kind of played the starters like, our coach played the starters probably like 38 out of 40 minutes. Like really wow. just kind of stuck with the first five, which was which was what it had to be in that in that game. I mean, you know, he was going with the people he had confidence with. So we're so it'd be back and forth game, back and back and forth. And granted, I, I played probably three or four minutes probably the first in the first half, but didn't check in the second half. Um, so we're down, so we foul, we're down three with I wanna say with four point six. If I remember correctly, 4.4 seconds left on the clock. Calls timeout. He says, Ethan, you're in the game. I and said, you haven't played the whole second half. I said, okay, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever you want. I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm, re- I'm always ready to play. Ends up drawing up a play for me in the huddle. And I'm like, okay, again. I'm like, all right, uh, I'll, I'll be ready to shoot. Um, wait, you, you, weren't, you weren't doing one of these. Wait. Oh, you mean Lasco number or whatever? Yeah, yeah, 12? Yeah, I like, okay, can I get a, pr- like, can I get a practice uh, shot or right. something? Yeah, I was like, hey, hey, hey rep, rep, let, let me see that real quick. Um, <laughs> um, but my, my roommate is like really, really, is one of my best friends again. Just really, really. I, I remember walking onto the court 4.4 seconds and him just saying, you're going to hit this shot. You're going to hit this shot. It's giving a lot of confidence to me. Like, hey, like, we all believe in you. We love you. And I'm over there like, shut up, shut up. Like, I don't want to hear you. Like, no, like, don't even, like, no one even talk to me. Um, I remember, it, I can't really, like, draw it up, but um, I was right by the free throw line, had to set a down screen right under the hoop for our point guard. He was going to get it. I think it was fake a handoff to the inbounder and hit me on a corner three with a down screen for me in the, to go to the corner. And it happened to be that they took away the down screen on the switch to the corner, so I'm just kind of standing there. He took me away, and I'm like, "Oh crap! Like, what? Do, what do I do?" And I saw my point guard. He was, he was, he was trying to. He was pump faking, trying to kind of draw a foul, but it, I saw that his foot was on the line. So I'm like, "Oh my god! Like, if he shoots this ball, even if it goes in, the game is over. We're down. Right. We're down three. And it, I'm, t- I'm telling you, this 4.4 seconds had to be 30 minutes long. They, they had to. They, <laughs> They had to pause it. I, I don't know what had happened, but they had to pause to pause the game at some point. So I see him. I come running around it, it kind of like uh, to, to try to get the ball. And I'm like, his name is Samir. And I say, Samir, Samir, Samir. And he's just he, – he's in the air, mid-air, about to shoot it, and just throws it back with his left hand. And I'm just curled around. I shoot it, and – and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is going in. Did you know right away it was going in? I was like, I, I was looking at the ball, I'm like, it felt really, really, like, honestly, if I, I don't even want to make it up. Like, I don't remember it at all. <laughs> I, I literally, just, like, like blacked out. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I just remember. Yeah, you, you almost ran out of the stadium. I saw yeah, the highlight. I, 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 I didn't know what to do. I was like, I've seen people who do this before, so let me run around like an idiot, you know? <laughs> like, and and it was this was not like uh this wasn't like, you know, a, a you know, a 20 22 footer. This was a this was a long was three. logo, logo Lasco. Yeah, that was that was a Dane Lillard type Steph Curry type three. And I, I just remember watching it. I'm like, yeah, this 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 is going in. And we've watched that. I mean, me, my friends, everybody, we've watched that video it had to be two thousand times at this point. <laughs> 
I mean, YouTube has two thousand one views. Two thousand. It was. It was. It was one. It was the most special moment of my basketball career yet thus far. I mean, hopefully next year and the next guy one two years will do it. Right. So I mean, that that is crazy. crazy. I mean, it's it's one of those things that. Well, look, that's all your hard work paying off from, yeah, from your sixth those, grade, you know, workouts you to now. Basketball. Right. I mean, even if you don't play basketball, you're, you're, every kid is like, oh, I want to hit a buzzer beater to go to March Madness, <laughs> or I want to hit a buzzer beater in college. I mean, every kid is like, that's their, that's their dream at the end of the day. And for me, I was like, yeah, that, that was really a dream come true in, in the least cliche way possible. Well, now that you said the words dream comes tr dream come true. So tell us about the, the big decision. So, you know, we, we know that you've announced that you're going to continue your basketball career. First of all, congratulations on Cardoza Law School, which, you know, it sounds like you I got your you education in your order. academics uh, right. in college, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, definitely, I definitely made up for it. Like any smart Jew, you're like, yeah, you know what? Uh, this is something I should, this uh, this school thing is probably important. So, yeah, I was like, all right, let me, let me, let me uh, use this basketball thing. Right, me. correct. So you decided to continue your uh, your career at Yeshiva University. So tell us, and obviously now Yeshiva University isn't what it was four years ago when you were when you were entering uh, college. So now 36-game win, win streak, unbelievable team great coaching players so what what was behind that yeah. decision and, and before you answer i mean obviously you wanted to go to law school so you know the last uh, year or two or so you had to get serious you had to take an lsat yeah. uh, did uh, you think in a in a million years you were going to graduate college uh and continue playing basketball i mean i always i always i always had kind of a dream to like you know go play professionally in israel potentially but to be honest, to play another couple of years of college basketball, I never thought of it. Never. I mean, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my four years. Whatever happens, happens. I mean, and thank God it just happened to work out in the perfect way. I mean, God. Co I COVID is good for some people, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh... I mean, thank God, you know. But, um, it, I mean, honestly, so after, uh, around a week, a week, a week and a half after our season ended here, I, I was talking, do I want to play another year? Do I want to just kind of focus on law? Do I – do I even want to not go uh, focus on law and go play basketball at, at a different college and just maybe? Because honestly, when I was thinking about law school, it limited my basketball options because not a lot of schools have law schools or or the law school wasn't great or just whatever it was. Right. So I had a lot of different options. I'm like, hey, do I want to just go get my MBA? And, and, and what, you said NBA or no, no, oh, no that's, that's M. MBA. That's M. Yeah. yeah, I mean NBA too, whatever. But, <laughs> Two people uh, already knows nothing about. Yeah, right, right. Uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so go do that. So I had a lot of different options. So we we we, did, we decided I was going to put my name into the very common transfer portal. Right? Yeah, it's like free agency in college basketball yeah. now. So the college free agency, um, and just kind of see what happens at the end of the day. Um, so once I entered my name in there, I, I heard from a, a, a few different schools, a bunch of Division two schools. Um, a, a, a handful of Division One schools, and it just was. At the end of the day, I I felt like I didn't need to kind of prove anything to anybody anymore. I didn't, and not even to anybody, to myself anymore. Um, at the Division One level, I could I, I could go to a, a bunch of different random schools right now and play, and even be offered scholarships at Division One at the Division One level, just based off the transfer portal. But I decided that there's kind of something bigger than that. At the end of the day, I mean. Coach Diamonds, uh, Elliot is just—he's—he's he's built something, something that's really real. I mean, it's something that that I didn't to, even I, I I knew about and I thought about for the last couple of years, but even to the day I, I committed on Friday, I didn't know how really big and and popular it was. I mean, day to day I've been getting more love and tweets and Instagram and texts than I, I did when I played Division One. That I want to hit the buzzer beater in the, in the right. tournament. I mean, it's it's been pretty. It's been amazing. I mean. So do you do you know those? Do you've played with those some of those guys, Terrell, Lifer, you know, Halper before, or this is? Um, I played against Aton a couple times in, in high school. I played against Ryan once or twice in high school. I also played against Gabe in high school. I mean, Are these all at the Saratech tournament. I played Ryan, yeah, Ryan and Aton in Saratech. I played Gabe in, in Cooper. Um, me and Ryan had a really really good game. <laughs> I remember that game. That was that was like a. a a, uh, a special high school game also. That was actually my last high school game was against Ryan. Um, pretty crazy game. But I, I happen to be very close with Gabe throughout my high school um, career. Really stayed in touch. Haven't stayed that much in touch in, in, in the past four years, but it was one of those friendships that, hey, I could text him and he could text me and it'd be like, we, we saw each other yesterday in a sense. 
Now, wow. for those for those people who have no concept of how this works now, uh, who are listening to this going, wait a minute, you just graduated college, you're in law school, what do you mean you're playing college basketball, COVID, what's this guy talking about, eligibility? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ari, I am talking about uh, your kids who listen to this show. Um, so... <laughs> How how does this all work now for you? What what can you do? What can't you do? What's what's the deal for those who don't get it? So basically, because um, my freshman year in Indiana, I didn't I didn't like technically play enough minutes or in games. I I, I ended up being a registered that year. So I got that. So based off that year, I, I already had a chance to play for a fifth year. So I could have played a fifth year just because that year was given back. To me. And then this past year, I was in every senior in the country. Well, every person in the country has a uh, player has another year of eligibility because COVID. So now I have, well, I found out today, uh, uh, Coach Simon's actually texted me um, and said that I, I have two more years to play. So that was, that was pretty exciting news. Just so given those two years, I could actually play another two years in college and go get God willing my law degree. So I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, really excited about it. I mean, I've been talking to Ryan, I've been talking to Gabe. We're all just really, really excited. I'm, I'm going to reach out to Aton and everybody else hopefully soon. I mean, I'm just really excited about it. Like, um, Does Gabe have two years left also or just one more? I don't know. Gabe is like 26 playing. I don't know. I, don't know. I, love, I love Gabe. He's a really good kid. I, I think – I don't know how many years he has left. Uh, is there like a rule like if you have three kids and you can't play? I mean, I don't know. Right, right. I think it's, I think no, that would take away a lot of players. I think, yeah, just... I was going to say, I not only have two kids, by the way. I think, I think it's only a two-kid limit, so. Right. So, look, so now I guess you're like, so you're coming into a program and, you know, you're going to, I mean, I assume, obviously, you, you know, you, you know your, your talent level, but, you know, you're going to have some competition. I mean, there's not just, you know, this kid went to Indiana, he went to Manhattan, and these kids, I mean, you know, they take their basketball serious. So oh, that's going to be, you know, coming out. So when do you, like, start, like, go to, so you'll be in YU starting in, like, September? Is that how yeah, it works? So I, I think I think they start like basketball and stuff. I think late August, maybe early September. So I'll be going there September. It's it, it's just a very very big change for me, you know. I mean, for the past four years, I haven't had Sukkot off. I haven't had Pesach off. I haven't had any winter break. I haven't had any spring break. So like, it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be really really nice, you know. It's gonna be really really nice to kind of play a lot of really really good basketball with really really good players, but also kind of have. Have some time back, you know. Have some, have some free time. Have right. Some family time. Some so do you? Time. Do you the also? Thing, I was gonna say the other thing is, you know, you're not going to college. You're going to law school. Right. Um. Yeah. And uh. And Cardozo's no uh no joke either. That's 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 the real deal. You know, is that something? Uh, oh, and I'll add a third thing to it, which is everyone we've had on associated with the YU program says, yeah, they might play in Division Three, but Elliot runs a Division One program. I mean, they practice every day. Is this something that you're worried about? you know, keeping up academically and, and continuing this, you know, very strenuous, uh, you know, basketball program. I, I'm not worried at all just because I know, I know the type of kid who I am and, and, and the, how hard I work. I mean, if there's an hour in my schedule, I'm going to get in the gym. If there's 30 minutes, I'm going to get in the gym. Whatever. It's the way of your life now. That's just yeah. that's what you've been doing since, you I know, six years. I think it happens to be that the schedule was very, very appealing to me basketball-wise. Cause I know they practice or we practice now at, um, at, I think, I think it's six 30 or 6 AM. Um, just for whatever it is, uh, uh, court time, whatever the reason is that just happens to be their time. And for someone who, who, who's going to law school and the schedule may be a little bit different, 6 AM practice being done by eight, eight 30 gives me a lot more time or to, to either stay after practice and get an extra hour, hour and a half in, or, or rush downtown and, and shower up and go to class and then have more time later in the day to, to work out, whatever it is. I mean, right. I think the early, the early morning practice really helps me. And that first person. thing, your campus is on the corner of, uh, I believe it's 8th Street, right? It, it, it's, it's in between, I want to say, 13th and 14th or, or 14th and 15th, one of those two. Yeah. Um, I actually went to grad school down there, not not Cardozo, down the block at NYU, down the block. Okay, right. Right. So, by the way, not not only is Elliot your coach, but he could be a, f- a future employee, mm. employer. Right. He's an attorney more, more as well. Both. So you, maybe, maybe, you I'll get a, maybe I'll get a nice internship. At his right. Office. Exactly. You should you should put a, written that into your scholarship. You and know, that's, way, this, uh, this could work over. out perfectly for you because you know two years of basketball, and then you can't play anymore, even if you want to, uh, and it'll leave that third year open, and you're supposed to be out there working. Exactly. I mean, right. God, 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 I mean, thank God, it, it really, really. So that that's it's an amazing, amazing story, and it's it's. 
nothing short of hard work, dedication. Like we said, you're not six nine. You're not. You, you're you're six two. You know, you you built yourself into the the best athlete you can be, and obviously, it's it's about hard work and determination. So before we let you go, we ask a lot of our guests this, and this is especially interesting for players who don't necessarily play in the Yeshiva League. But during your high school career, who were the uh, you know three or four best players Yeshiva League that you played against in either a tournament, a Sarachek, or you know something? What'd you say? In the Yeshiva League. In the Yeshiva, like Yeshiva, like the Frishes, the Hafters, the DRSs, you know. Um, it would definitely be. Uh, it would definitely be. Um... Honestly, I want, I'm trying to think before I say an answer that I don't really think about. No, we like when people answer without thinking. It's better. No. I would definitely Sorry, say, honestly, my, 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 my three backcourt mates or my two backcourt mates and my big man. I mean, it would definitely be Gabe, Ryan, and Eitan. I want to say, I mean. Oh, how convenient. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna put those guys on the side. We need two other names. Two uh, other names. Two from, other names. Okay. Two other people that are not on your team. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, we already know you're a good teammate. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, no, but that's actually serious. Like, I actually believe in that. But I want to say, I'm trying to think, who have we played? Um, I'm trying to think who we lost to, honestly. <laughs> um, we lost to DRS one time. Oh, Brian Knapp was very, very good. I played him in Cooper. We actually beat them, but he, he was a really, really good player. Right, we've heard his name before. Someone's mentioned him. He, he played in uh, Division One as well, right? He played Cornell. Um, he actually, yeah, he played Cornell. Um, he was really, really good. Um, who else did we play that? That was good. I mean, Shaw Hebbett always had just really good players. Um, they, uh, what's that? Blanking on his name. His name. All right, don't don't worry. We 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 don't want. Listen, you hit a shot with four point six seconds left and a play that you haven't played a whole half. But the what? So cool. Is that a kid from California? I think, yeah, from Eula or something? or Yeah, I think his younger brother was really good at Shaw Hebbett, too, if I'm not mistaken. That was so long ago. I feel right, like, right. I feel old that now. was like four colleges ago, high school. Yeah, <laughs> that was three high schools and four colleges ago. I, right, right. It's, it's, it's a long ways away. So, no, this is, this is a, great, a great story. We, we are looking forward to continuing watching your story. You're still writing it. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, YU next year is just going to be, it's going to be must-see TV every yeah, night. I, I mean, think, listen, for fans of YU, um, many of whom listen to this show, uh, it's such a big deal because, you know, we've talked to so many people about the disappointment of the tournament getting canceled, uh, and I guess is now still last year, right? Still last year? Yeah. yeah. Last year's tournament getting canceled, and a lot of those great seniors – you know, thinking, thinking that's it. You know, this was our year. This was our chance. And now guys move on. You know, they have the, they had the abbreviated season this year. Um, but for, for a talent like you to come in now, I mean, it's, it's, it's literally breathing new life into this program and, you know, uh, hopefully big things in uh, your future and team's future. I really, thank you. I really, I mean, I really do think we can, we can really do some really special things this year. Really special things. I'm really excited. You better be careful. Yeah, no. I might kick you guys out of division three. Right. I'm okay with that. By the way, if I play my last year at YU at the Division One level with this talent, I'll, I'll be cool with it. Right. You got. You're, you're ready. You can definitely. That team could hold their own. That's not a problem. I'll be happy to play anybody. So. Right. Well, okay. Ethan, thank you so much for coming on the show and really, you know, talking about your story. It's going to be, you know, for it's a role model. You know, as as a younger the younger generations hear this and you know really want to have those dreams about Division One. You you did it. You did it through hard work. And like we said, you're not the biggest guy in the court always. You're just probably the hardest worker and you're really dedicated to your craft. So thank you. All the best of luck. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thanks again. Uh, I mean, we really appreciate it. Ethan, uh, that's a really cool story. And uh, I mean, we, we paced that out perfectly. We started in sixth grade. We landed Right at yeah. the end, right, right where chronologically, we, we we just we nailed it. But that wow, was like it, almost scripted, Ari. Right. The the thing the thing like and I and I said it a bunch of times during the episode is what really sticks out to me is that he's six two, one hundred and fifty pounds. You know, maybe he's 160, 170, whatever he is now. I mean, that's meaning he must be just such a hard worker and to dream of something when you're not six eight, you're not six seven, you're not dunking the ball, you're playing below the rim. That's obviously something yeah. that, you know, really tangible kids can look up to and say, hey, why not me? And that's the thing about basketball. You know, look, uh, we don't know any uh, kids from, from a religious background that have played in the NFL. None. Um, Probably will never. And, and by the way, there are plenty of guys who are 5'8", 185 in the NFL. I mean, it's doable. There are certain right. positions that call for that. 
But, yeah, but they uh, run like a 4.0. That's yeah, all. but uh, <laughs> Jews don't really play football at any point. <laughs> right. We get 4.0s, but we don't run them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, correct. So, um, you know, but but baseball, that, you know, we're now seeing some uh, some Jewish kids excelling at baseball and basketball. Those are the two sports. I mean, listen, does it help to be 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", and play basketball? Yeah, absolutely. You know, is it is it difficult for your average six foot kid coming from a Jewish background to look at Ryan Terrell and go, oh, uh, he's six seven? You know, right. and and by the way, I think we I think we dispelled that rumor too. Uh, in that Ryan Terrell works as hard as anybody. Yes, uh, to everyone get to it. It has that. it has being six seven is great, but that's not the that's not the right. whole there, story. There are plenty that's, guys not in the NBA who are six seven and above. Right. That's just cha- <laughs> that's just chapter one. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, and Ethan, you know, Ethan is that story where, listen, you don't have to be, you don't have to be six, five, six, six. Um, you learn how to shoot. You learn how to handle the ball. Tell me you're Goodman also six, two, six, three. Uh, that's, that's really the prerequisite, right? The that's hard, it. the hard work and dedication. And by the way, how excited are you to watch why you basketball next year? I, I, mean, I, I meant so much what I said to him at the end of the call, because I think, you know, Look, none of the players that we interviewed are going to say it out loud, but there was a little bit of a d- deflating of the balloon a little bit. Um, and we don't know if they would have won last year. Nobody does, and every school is going to say they thought they were going to. Of course. But why you had a real shot to win that next game, get into the Elite Eight. I, I mean, uh, they had a real shot. And then the way that the matchups worked out, it was possible. But they lost some serious guys. You know, they, they lost yeah, but a it's, it's- it's a they, program you know, now. And, like, and to they reload. That's what they do now. That's what Coach Simons is doing. To bring Lasco in, and, and look, I, I think he said it. And uh, you know, if if you and I asked Elliot about it, he'd say the same. I mean, it is as serendipitous as can be. Here's a kid who wants to go to law school. Magically, has two years left of legitimately has, but like right, yeah. There's, how, there's no how pulling. It worked out that he has two years left, and now and listen. He went to Manhattan College. It, it's not Harvard academically, but now he has an opportunity to go to Cardozo, which is a phenomenal law school. Um, you know, I don't think the MBA is in Ethan's career because at some point the six one thing does catch up to you a little bit, okay. and uh, and you know he'll be able to come out of he'll be able to come out of school with a fantastic education. It all comes full circle, uh, and right. give this YU team two more years of him and uh, flying Ryan and Gabe for we don't know how long, and you know that whole cast and. Listen, they were so close last yeah, year. It, it, it's just going to be – I mean, I'm excited. I mean, 36 games in a row, and like we said, I mean, I can't imagine Elliot must be chomping at the bit to just, you know, it comes September Can't time. wait for those spring workouts. It's getting right. started right now, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's great. And, and again, I mean, Ethan was, you know, all our guests, they're just – their stories are just – they're just – I mean, they're just so interesting, and it just comes down to hard work, really, you know, and, it, and that's not just about sports. You could do that in anything. You really – you know, yeah. be be great at what you can and just, you know, work as hard as you can. And you Ari, I, will, I will leave our listeners with this point. Uh, and of course, we thank all of our uh, nine sponsors who we mentioned at the top of the show. But there was one thing that Ethan said that really stuck out to me. And uh, I didn't want to go back to it because uh, he's a great storyteller. And we were like six stories later by the, by the <laughs> time he stopped talking. But he talked about his Indiana experience and said, you know what? Uh, I just I, I didn't get to play. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not the Indiana experience. When he played on the uh, AAU team in his junior and senior year of high school, and he said every practice was a learning experience. Right. And he said if I lost the ball, it was a learning experience. So I wasn't going to lose it next time. And I think that that lesson is so important. You're not always going to be the starting point guard or starting shooting guard. Um, but... That's happening at YU now. All these kids were high school stars at YU, and they're sitting on the bench you know, to start their careers in a lot of situations. Yeah, I mean, take any you know any opportunity that you can to play up, uh, and he did say it about Indiana as well. I mean, the the amount that he learned there, right? He said the that, program, you know, the, the weight room, from, the trainers, yeah, the jump from eighth grade to ninth grade, and then the jump from twelfth grade to his freshman year. Those those two years were so big. Um, I, I think that's super important for kids. Go out there, play against kids that are better than you, older than you, bigger than you, stronger than you. What you'll learn will make you better. Right. When you get outside to, the bubble. Get outside yeah, the bubble. That's that I mean, too. he said it. That too. What a what a you know, crazy put yourself story. against the best and you know you'll become better. There's no question about it. So yeah. and and if you get a call from the IMG Academy, you should go. Those yeah. are the two things. I think. Exactly. So this was episode number ten. Ten. We're gonna can't have to use my hands in, anymore. You're gonna have to bring in an artificial hand for the next right. episode. So we we hope you guys are enjoying the the ride as much as we are. And this is just uh, 
you know, we're going to have some future guests are just going to, you know, some great stories. And uh, we have some big names coming up and, you know, tune in, follow us on YouTube at Yeshiva League uh, Pass YouTube. Is that what we are? That is where we are. And on all audio we platforms, at. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, check it out on Anchor. All the links are in the YouTube description. And uh, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Yeah, me too. Right. Peace right. out. Adios.